Some months back, I did a video on my 1134, just demonstrating direct keypad entry, and at that time, I did not have the RL drives working. Now that the RL drives are working, I thought I'd take just a few minutes to show the drives at work and what's involved with installing and removing a disk pack and reading and writing to that pack. Back of the system, and you can see how the cables have to be routed to allow the drives to move freely in and out of the rack. So I'll turn the system on and wait for the load light to come on on the RL drives. You cannot open or close the drives until the load light is illuminated. Now that the load light is on, we can go ahead and load the disk pack. Slide the drive out. Open it on the top. Take the disk pack. And then slide the drive back in place. Now that I have disk packs loaded in drive 0 and drive 1, I'll go ahead and mount the disk packs. To do that, you push the load buttons. Now both drives will start to spin up. And when the drives are ready, the ready lights will illuminate to let me know that. Now you can see drive 0 is ready, and drive 1. As soon as this system comes on, it already loads a bootstrap loader program. But if you wanted to actually load it manually, we'll just hit Control halt And now what I'm going to do is clear the display and enter the address of the bootstrap loader, which is 173000. Load that address, and then tell the system, control start from that address. And now the boot program's running. So now I'll come over to the console, and we can see that we have a boot prompt. What I'm going to do is tell the system to load from the RL01 drive. The RL drives are known as DL. So we'll just say DL. And we don't have to specify what number drive it is because the default is always DL0 or drive 0. Then I'll hit return. And we can see that it's loaded the uh, RT11 FB operating system version 503. If you watch the display on the disk drive, when the system's loading or accessing the disk, you'll see the ready light flash. First thing I want to do is after I load the operating system is set the date and time on the system. PDP-11s do not recognize any date beyond 1999. So I'm going to set this by telling it D-A-T-E and today is the 3rd of March but instead of 2013 I'm just going to say 1993. Now if I ask the system what the date is it will prompt 3 March 93.
this is a two drive system with drive zero being the system drive on top and drive one being underneath of it. What we'll do now is look at some simple drive operations in the RT11 environment. RT11 is very similar to DOS so if you've worked with DOS RT11 is very easy. One of the first and simplest commands is just a directory command that lets you see what's on the directory of the disk you're looking at. So in this case I just printed a directory of the system disk. In this case it's the default system driver. With the directory command you could also use wildcards just like in DOS. Let's say I wanted a directory of just the system files, the .sys files. So I did was directory and I'm just going to use star dot sys and now it'll print a directory of just system files and ignore everything else. In RT11 the operating system likes to assume the default device to read and write from is labeled DK. I could use the show command and that will give me a list of what devices are mounted or recognized in RT11 now. Like I said, this machine does have two drives on it and both of them are currently loaded. So DL0 is my current work drive and it's also my system drive. What I want to do now is reassign drive 1 as my work drive. So I use the assign command I'm going to ask it to make DL1 my default work drive, DK. Now, if I use the show command, it'll show that there are two DLs mounted. DL0 is my system, and DL1 is my work drive. DL1 is the second RL drive. So now if I ask for, let's say, a directory of, let's just do com files, it's going to show me, well, not really that large. It would be larger if I do system. And in this case, these files are not mounted on my system drive, the zero drive. These are all files that are located on the second drive, on drive one. It's important to remember that unless if you specify what drive you want a directory or a file from, the machine will always default to that DK drive. Probably one of the most useful files in RT11 that I found is the help file. And you can see if you just type in help it'll give you the general outlines for the help file. But what's really nice about it is if you wanted help on a specific topic you can enter help and let's say you wanted to know more about the copy command. So help and copy and return. And it will bring up a help file just on the syntax and methods of using the copy file. And at the very bottom of that help category, Still not there yet. On the very bottom of each help category on each command, they'll also give you examples of what the commands would look like. Those are real helpful too. Another really useful utility is the edit command, which works a lot like Edlin did in DOS. In this case, I'm going to edit a text file as an example, so I want to see what text files I have. So I'm just going to do directory 
star dot txt. That's going to show me that I have four different text files that are currently on my working volume. So now I'm going to go ahead and tell the system that I want to edit V5 user dot txt if that file didn't already exist in directory when edit starts would automatically make that file so I'll go ahead and hit return and what happened is I now have a prompt at the beginning of the file and of course I can move through the file make ch changes in its contents add or delete words or do whatever and then when I exit the file that will automatically be saved to get into the command mode of the text editor you have to push the number lock key and 7 After pushing number lock 7, you'll get a command prompt, and you have a couple options. One option is just to type in exit, and after you push enter, the operating system will save the changes you made under the name of the file that you typed in. It will also automatically change a version of the file that was original without changes only changing the extension on that file to a backup file, a BAK file. Or, the other option is just type in quit. And when you enter quit, and hit enter, what will happen is then, you'll get a response that will tell you that the output file was purged and no changes were made to the original file. last thing we want to do before turning the system off is have the heads back off of the disk packs. So we'll go ahead and hit the load buttons. The ready lights will go out. The heads are retracted. And what will happen is the motors that drive the disk packs will now start slowing the disk packs down. The disks on these machines normally run at 2400 RPM. Once the disk is at a safe speed where it can be removed, the load lights will come on. And then once the load lights are illuminated, the drive can be pulled out, and the disk pack removed. Then, you can go ahead and turn the system off, and it's suddenly much quieter.